Design aids, such as rulers, guides, and column guides, allow us to accurately align and lay out objects when creating documents, helping us to create balanced and effective designs. When first opening Publisher, our rulers will be hidden, so I'll go to View and choose Show Rulers. The rulers will then appear running around the edge of my document view. They'll use whichever unit of measurement the document has been set to, so in this case, millimeters. If at any point I wish to change the document measurements, I can do this by going to File, choosing Document Setup, selecting the Document tab, and changing the document units. For the moment though, I'll leave the document measurement set to millimeters. We could also choose to adjust the ruler's point of origin. So I'll zoom out slightly, and I'll move my mouse to the top left hand corner where both rulers intersect, and then I'll click drag the rulers into position, carefully aligning the point of origin with the top left hand corner of the page. With our rulers now visible and our point of origin adjusted, we can now begin to drag out some basic ruler guides. Ruler guides are lines that float over the top of our document view, and they're used to help us position and align objects. Additionally, guides will not be printed and can be toggled on or off alongside our preview and construction modes, or hidden and shown by going to View and selecting Show Guides. To draw out a new guide, I'll simply go to one of my rulers and click drag the mouse perpendicular to the ruler, pulling out the new guide over my document view. Then, when I'm happy with its position on the page, I can release the mouse button. We can adjust the guide's position at any time by simply selecting the guide with the Move tool and dragging it to a new location. When drawing out a guide, we can also hold Shift to make our guide snap to whole numbers. Additionally, if I hold Option as I drag out a new guide, from the left hand ruler, the guide will instead be drawn out from the top, creating a new horizontal guide instead. We can also duplicate existing guides by holding Command on Mac or Control on Windows and click dragging on the guide. When doing so, we'll see an additional readout called the Delta which reports the distance between the new guide and the previous guide. With these guides in place, we can now begin to align these text frames on the back cover. So I'll select this first group of frames and begin by aligning them to the new guides. We'll also move the date and finally the blurb, once again snapping it to the guides. We can see now that this central guide, which was previously aligned, is now obsolete. To delete a guide, you can simply hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and single click the ruler guide. Up to this point, I've been creating ruler guides by click dragging them out onto my document view by using the rulers. However, if we wanted to be more precise, we could instead choose to use the guides dialog. We can access the guides dialog in one of two ways, by either going to view and selecting guides, or if we already have a guide on our page, we can simply double click the guide to open the guides dialog. Using the guides dialog, we can add and adjust guides using numerical input on the keyboard. For instance, I could refine some of these guides we made earlier by rounding up this guide's position to whole numbers. So I'll select and double click into the guide field and we'll change 30.9 to 30. I could also use the dialog specifically to make sure that the spine of this book is completely centered. I know that the spine of my book needs to be 30 millimeters and that each of my pages are 158 millimeters wide. That means I need to position a guide at 143 millimeters and 173 millimeters. So I'll create a new vertical guide by clicking on the add new guide button, double click into the guide and edit the guide changing its position to 143. We can then repeat the process adding an additional vertical guide, double clicking into the guide and changing its position to 173 millimeters. I can then select the rectangle acting as my spine and realign it to these new guides. I could also go ahead and create two additional guides with a five millimeter gap either side, ensuring that the text that will be placed along the spine will be evenly spaced along its center. So I'll create two new guides and I'll double click into the entry and I'll change them to 148 millimeters and 168 millimeters respectively. I can now make sure that my text frames are aligned to the new guide we've created. Making sure snapping is turned on, I'll start to move these frames into position. So I'll select this first text frame with the Jungle Book text in it and will align it to the center of the guides. 
will extend the text frame so it's evenly spread onto either side. I'll then move the main vertical title, bringing it once again into line with the center. I'll make sure that the T on the Jungle Book aligns with the top of this guide. Finally, I'll adjust the date and the Deluxe Edition text frame. Moving both into the center and adjusting the edge of the frames to snap to the new guides. In addition to ruler guides, we can also use column guides to help us position text, images, and pull quotes into columns. For example, I have here a magazine layout and I want to extend this text frame so I can clearly see the overset text. Visually, I think I have enough room for around three columns per page. Before we navigate to the guides dialog, I'll make sure that the column guides are visible by going to view and ensuring show column guides is enabled. I'll then navigate to the guides dialog. And this time, instead of adding a new ruler guide, I'll move across to the column guide section and I'll increase the number of columns to three, matching the number of text frames I want to create. As soon as I begin to adjust the number of column guides, the column guides become visible. By default, the column guides are a light gray color, but I can always change the color to make the guides more visible. I'll pick a nice bright color like this pink so I can clearly see the guides. I could also choose to change the gutter, which is the spacing in between the guides, but for the moment, I think I'll leave it set to its default. I can now go in and begin to draw a new series of linked text frames, snapping the new frames to the column guides. At the moment, the page layout uses three column guides per page and three text frames per page. However, aligning images and pull quotes that intersect or interact with these column designs can be difficult to achieve. If we scroll to the page below, we can see that this page uses a number of text frames, a single image, and two pull quotes. And I want to align the pull quotes and this image to the spread. So I'll navigate to the guides dialog once again, and this time I'll increase the number of column guides until I think I've found a suitable number. I think nine works well for this example. With these new guides in place, we can see three column guides fit to one text frame. We can now use these to position our pull quotes and images so they're intersecting each of the columns equally. So I'll begin by adjusting the pull quotes using the move tool to alter the frames, dragging them into position. Finally, I'll take the opportunity to revise and reposition this image on the right hand side, aligning the image to the new column guides. With these elements in place, we can now enable preview mode, which removes all construction elements. And there we go, that was how to create and utilize rulers, guides, and column guides in Affinity Publisher. I hope you found this interesting, and thank you for watching.